ASP.NET Web Forms Error Handling. This video lecture will introduce you to the concept of error handling with try, catch, and exceptions in an ASP.NET Web Forms application. In ASP.NET Web Forms, when building pages in your web applications, you have the ability to utilize the language of your code behind and the ASP.NET framework. In this video lecture, I am using C Sharp. Another common language used is Visual Basic. In C Sharp, like in many other programming languages, if an exception is thrown, the runtime language looks for a catch block. If there isn't a catch block, an unhandled error message displays. In the case of ASP.NET, you will see what is often called the yellow screen of death. Let's take a look at how we can get a yellow screen of death. So here I am on a yellow screen of death. So I have an exception in my application. This is an exception on the page in the button submit click event. The input string was not in a correct format. Let's take a look at this page that I've created. So what I have is just a very basic web forms page. This page has a text box and a submit button and we have a little label here that tells us this should be a decimal. So if I type a decimal into this box, like 49.99, and I submit, it says my decimal is 49.99. That is what was expected, and everything worked out okay. However, if I come in here and I type in a string, I get an error. So let's go ahead and take a look at that code block that is causing this yellow screen of death. So here is my ASPX page. Let me zoom in so you can see it. So like I said, there's just a text box and a button. And there is a label here that we are um, setting to visibility false. And if the error happens, or if there's a message, we go ahead and we set this visibility to true, and we add a message to the label. So by default, that label is not visible. So as you can see, I have no validation logic going on on this page or in the code behind. Now, in most cases, you're not going to get an error like this because you'll add validation to your text box and it will be in a validation group, and this button will trigger that validation. So you will get validation client side. And then on the server side, you can add, uh, wrap this, whatever your application logic is in, in a page dot is valid to make sure the page is indeed valid before proceeding with whatever logic with the data that you're expecting. But for example's sake, and for simple example's sake, we're going to go ahead and use decimal.parse to try to parse txt decimal.txt, that's test bo text box string. Now, because we are basically casting the string to a decimal, we get an exception because obviously that if the data I put in there that is a string and not a decimal, that is incorrect and it can't be parsed. So, if we create a try catch block in our code, we can prevent the yellow screen from happening. So, I'm going to add a string up here for the message and set it to string.empty. I am going to cut and paste my cast to the expected decimal 
And I'm going to go ahead and pass this message. Now, if this is successful and this does not cause an exception, we are going to output the text that your decimal is and the expected decimal. Now, I'm going to change this so that it gets our message string. So basically, I'm passing that in here at the end of all this. Now, in the catch, I want to set the message to something went wrong. So I initialize this string message. If everything's successful and this doesn't cause an exception, we get the output of your decimal is. And if we get an exception, we run this block instead of producing a yellow screen. So let's save that, build it, and refresh the page. So first things first, I'm going to put a decimal in here and we get your decimal is 8.90. Now I'm going to put a non-decimal into the box and we get something went wrong. Now because we're using ASP.NET, we get access to the exception object. So system.exception is a part of ASP.NET and the exception object is actually pretty cool. So I can actually append what went wrong to my error message if I wanted to. I have a message that I have access to in my exception. I have an inner exception. I have the stack trace. Now this is particularly handy if you want to do some logging. So say, say I have a log file and whenever there's an exception, I want to add the entire exception to include the stack trace to that log. Well, I could do that and I could format it however I wanted to. But for this example, we are simply going to use the exception message. So refresh the page. I should put something different in here just for fun. And now we get something went wrong. And this is our exception message. Input string was not in a correct format. So that was a simple example of page level error handling. That exception that occurred wasn't in a sequence of application flow, such as a checkout process. Now imagine an online shopping cart with a checkout process. If in that process there were no exception handling, imagine what that would be like. Let's say the user enters their name, shipping address, and billing information onto a page. That is a lot of information to type into a page. Now, ASP.NET Web Forms uses view state to maintain page state and make forms sticky. However, if the page encounters an exception, the page state is lost. So back to the example, the user typed all that information onto the page and clicked a place order button. Now the code uses a web service it went down for a few seconds right when the user clicked the button. Now there is an exception because the web service was unavailable. Now the user gets a yellow screen of death, or if the site is configured properly, they are redirected to an error page. However, all of their information they typed into the page is now lost. Do you think they will try again? Probably not, and that customer is probably not coming back to the site. So whenever you are writing code for your web application, you need to think through each block of code and whether or not an exception is possible.
anytime you're casting a data type from one type to another, or using an object that can be nullable, you need to write a try catch block. In the case of our shopping cart example, a try catch block should exist around the code that is calling the web service. If the code cannot connect to the web service, then in the catch block, the code should try again at least one time just in case the web service was only having a glitch. If the connection should fail again, we should provide the user with an error and return them to the page without losing view state, just like we did here in our example. Notice I have my error, but I didn't lose my view state. My input is still here. One thing I mentioned is that you can prevent users from seeing the yellow screen of death by setting up a redirect for exceptions. This is important to do for production sites because the yellow screen actually displays the .NET version which can give nefarious individuals ideas for exploits on your site. Let's take a look at how we can set up the redirect. So in my web application, I am going to go to my Solution Explorer and I'm going to open up the web.config file. Now in my web config, in the system.web section, I'm going to add custom errors mode equals on and default redirect error page ASPX, which is just a simple little page that I created to display uh, a message to you, the user that we have an error. So in the code behind of my exception handling example page, I'm going to go ahead and comment out our try catch so that we can get an error when we type something incorrect in the box. So here we are back on the page and once again I'm going to type in a decimal and we don't get an exception. Let's type in something else and let's hit submit. This is not a de decimal, so we should get an exception. As you can see, instead of showing a yellow screen page without any error handling on my page when an exception is thrown, I automatically get redirected here to my error page. Also, you get in the query string automatically an ASPX error path. So you could pull that out of this query string and maybe add a button that says, go back and try again, or something to that effect. So, some quick review. If an exception occurs on your page, view state is lost and the user sees either a yellow screen or is redirected to an error page. It is very important to think through possible exceptions and wrap those blocks of code with try catch blocks in order to prevent complete loss of application flow. This video lecture introduced you to the concept of error handling with try, catch, and exceptions in ASP.NET Web Forms applications. Thank you for listening.